Hey, Keith Van Wimmer, Van Tech Consulting. Um, if this is your first visit to our uh, to our YouTube channel, we'd like to welcome you. Hope you find some of the information that we're going to talk about and discuss is uh, is useful. If you're currently a subscriber, we thank you for your subscription and supporting the channel. So today we're going to talk about some uh, what we'll call highly volatile um, or controversial topics. All right high loss splices. So we get all this different information from different sources, manufacturers, you know, test equipment manufacturers, splice machines, etc. Um, and a lot of this information we get is incorrect. So I kind of want to set the record straight today. So to start out with, um, we're going to talk about a few terms that are used in splicing or in fiber. And one of the terms is um, is mode. So we have single mode and we have multi-mode. So great, what's a mode? Well, a mode is simply defined as a path the light follows. All right, so in single mode fiber, the light follows a single path down the fiber. In multi-mode, light is following different paths. So think about you walking down a sidewalk you're following a single path. However, if you have a bunch of friends with you and everybody's serpentining and following different, you know, different paths, then that would be multi-mode, all right? So the other thing that we have to talk about in fiber is what's called the mode field diameter. And the mode field diameter is defined as where in the fiber the light propagates. So not all light stays inside the core specifically, right? Some of that light, specifically the longer wavelengths, will travel at the core cladding interface. And there's some physics behind that and why that's done. But for this video, we'll just leave it there. So rather than jump into the computer and, and put this on the screen, we're just going to zoom in on it. Um, and if you look at this, we have different types of fiber here or, or different manufacturers of fiber and they're all manufacturing uh, G.652. All right, G.652 is what we would consider SMF or single mode fiber and it's probably the most, it is the most common fiber in, you know, utilized. So if you look over here, we have a couple um, 1310, we have our two wavelengths, 1310, 1550 and down here we have the mode field diameter. So at 1310, uh, shorter wavelength travels more centrally located to the core, and it's a 9.4 plus minus 0.4. At 1550, the mode field diameter is 10.6 plus minus 0.5, right? So again, what this is pointing out is that the longer the wavelength, the more light is traveling at the uh, core cladding interface, okay? So, mode, a path the light follows, mode field diameter, where in the fiber the light is propagating, all right? So one of the things that we want to talk about when we discuss high loss splices is uh, core diameter mismatch. So I hear this a lot from uh, production splicers that, you know, the reason that we're getting high loss splices, um, you know, is because the core diameter mismatch, the cores are different sizes. And that's not true, in single mode fiber, there is no such thing as a core diameter mismatch, all right? It's a nine micron core plus minus, um, you know, I think it's a, um, a couple tenths of a micron. Um, so again, it's, it's not enough to create a high loss splice. Most of the loss comes from when you have a mode field diameter change, right? If you go from a, just making numbers up here, when you go from a 9.4 to a 9.8, we're going to get loss going from 9.8 to the 9.4, all right? Um, the only place that we get a core diameter mismatch is when we're splicing multimode fiber. So multimode fiber has three different um, core diameters. The most common is a 62.5 and 50 micron core, and then the military uses 100 microns. So again, if you spliced a 100 micron core to a 50 micron core, you get the picture. That's a pretty, pretty large uh, mismatch of core diameter. All right. So when we talk about mode field diameter, again, 
you know, that's that's one of the largest contributors to splice loss. So exactly how much does that affect our splice? Well, this is an excerpt, a page from um, Corning, right? And it's an application note 103. Um, I'll put a link down in the in the video description and you guys can uh, folks can download this if you want. Um, and it talks about splicing best practices and, you know, a lot of mumbo jumbo and math and all kinds of cool stuff. But figure two, right below figure two, it states that, and I quote, the intrinsic loss is relatively low for MFD mismatches, so mode field diameter mismatches, expected within typical manufacturer tolerances. So again, for fiber to be classified as G.652, it has to be within tolerances of the ITU G.652 standard. Quote, for example, the worst case fiber related bidirectional loss for fiber having a 9.2 plus minus 0.4 micron MFD specification would be approximately 0.03 dB. So again, if you had a mismatch in mode field diameters, it would be about a 0.03 or three hundredths of a dB. Again, if I've got a splicer out there splicing 0.03s, I'm going to be pretty happy with that, okay? And again, there's, there's nothing you can do about this. I wanted to take this to the next step and just give you folks an idea of exactly what has to transpire in order to get a high loss splice, all right? So if we look at this, and again, I'm going to um, be using my InnoView 1 Fusion Splicer, Arc Fusion Splicer. Um, this is a uh, clad alignment. It does have a, a wonderful um, option that we can use for this uh, exercise, which is I can splice in an attenuator, all right? And the way that it does the attenuation is by taking the cores aligning the fiber and offsetting the cores, all right? And that's going to create loss. So basically, it's gonna create a bad splice. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna go in is select the splice mode. And when we select our splice mode, there's a bunch of different splice modes that we can do. We can do single mode to single mode, multi-mode, dispersion shifted, non-zero dispersion shifted. And down here, there's a multi-mode um, ATT and a single mode ATT, which is an attenuator, all right? If we select that and edit our splice mode and select that, we can go in and put in a target loss. So for our example and exercise today, we're going to use a 0.3 dB. Now I picked that number because according to the Telcordia GR20, there you want a mean splice loss of dot one with no single splice exceeding a dot three. So in other words, if you had 10 splices, um, and one of them was a dot three and nine of them were zeros, you would have a 0 0.03 mean, all right? So again, we're gonna set that at a 0 0.3 to see what happens, all right? And then we'll go ahead and go back. Now I've already done all the cleaning and I've got my OTDR and I've done my, you know, my connectors and did my, um, did my arc calibration, which you should always do before splicing, did my arc calibration, clean my cleaver, all that fun stuff. Okay, so we're going to go into our splice mode, and I have this set to pause at every step, all right? So we'll hit the set button. It's going to bring our fiber in and basically align by, again, this is a clad alignment, so it's going to al align by the outside diameter of the fiber, not by the core. We're going to hit set again, and specifically what I want you to watch is um, right in this area. You're going to see one of the fibers is going to come in, and that fiber is going to shift, okay? And notice how we got that fiber. You might have heard the motor, tick, 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 and it pulled that fiber down and offset the core. So if you notice on the graphic, that core is offset roughly 30%, 33%, all right? So about a third, which would mean that it's offset about three microns, all right? The next step, we'll go ahead and we'll hit and burn this. Now notice, on the bottom here, we have our estimated splice loss of 0.88. Now that's an estimate. Again, this is like a gas gauge on a Harley Davidson. It's a entertainment purposes only. This is telling you how your machine is consistently performing. And if that starts to rise, you need to redo an arc check. So 
again, this is this is something for another video, but um, this is just telling me that, yep, I got something going on here, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shoot this with the OTDR and see just exactly how bad this splice is. Okay, so our OTDR shot is done. Um, we're using APC connectors here, which are giving us zero reflectance or below 99, negative 99. So it's showing my first connector over here as a um, fusion splice, right? So it's giving me a 0.144 of loss there. We go out 1,354. Look at that, 1,354.22. And that's our, our splice, which is right here. And our splice loss, we dialed in a dot three. Our splice loss is 0.247, all right? So again, the machine, the machine said that we were gonna have a 0.88, all right? Almost a full dB of loss. We only got a 0.247. The point I'm making is that in order to get high loss splices, the dot three fives, the dot fours, things like this, or what people believe to be high splice loss, it's not going to be a core offset or things like this. Most of the time, high splice loss can be attributed to improper stripping procedures. You're chattering the fiber and it's causing uh, micro bends, not macro, but micro bends in the fiber, all right? Um, giving us some loss there. Your machine's not tuned up. Your arcs aren't good. You didn't do the arc calibration so it's not burning at the correct temperature. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things in the process that contribute versus what's intrinsic in the fiber. And what I'd like to say is make sure that, you know, when you're doing your, your splicing is that you are doing all the proper steps. You're cleaning your cleaver, you're cleaning your splice machine, you're doing your arc calibration, I mean, it sounds like a lot of stuff, you know, going on, but really it only takes you a couple minutes to get quality burns. Just remember, speed does not equal quality, all right? I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it informative. Um, you know, not all machines will have this attenuation setting that you can play with. You know, some of them do. Um, and if they do, and you got some time, do this, set it up in a lab, you know, in, a, in a, an environment where you can manipulate and put in a half a dB or five dB of loss and just see exactly how that affects the, uh, you know, the machine and how it works, okay? So anyway, I hope you found this video enlightening and uh, gained some information out of this and uh, at least found it interesting. If you're currently subscribed, we'd like to again, thank you for your subscription and uh, supporting the channel. If you're not currently subscribed, we ask that you consider clicking that subscribe button and hitting that bell so you get your notifications on the uh, on new videos as they come out. If there's any topics that you'd like us to cover or you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. I'm always glad to, to interact with the, with the viewers and uh, answer the questions that we can. If we don't know the answer, we'll go find it for you, okay? Until next time, be safe and thanks for watching.